Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back to the reading of Dialectic Spiritualism, Vedic view on Western philosophy by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Presently this book is published under the name Beyond Illusion and Doubt and we are Shravanam Diaries Podcast. I'm your host Sula Lita Devidasi. We are starting chapter number 9. Darwin The British scientist Charles Darwin, 1809-1882, laid the foundation of modern evolutionary theory with his concept of the development of all forms of life through the slow working process of natural selection. His work has exerted a major influence on the life sciences and earth sciences and on modern thought in general. Here, Srila Prabhupada challenges the crux of Darwin's theory by pointing out two critical omissions. The overseeing intelligence of God and the transmigration of the immortal soul from body to body. Disciple Darwin tried to show how the origin of living species could be fully explained by the purely mechanical, unplanned action of natural forces. By the process he called natural selection, all the higher complex forms of life gradually evolved from more primitive and rudimentary ones. In a given animal population, for example, some individuals will have traits that will make them adapt better to their environment. These more fit individuals will survive to pass on their favorable traits to their offspring. The unfit will gradually be weeded out naturally. Thus, a cold climate will favor those who have, say, long hair or fatty tissue, and the species will then gradually evolve in that direction. Srila Prabhupada The question is that in the development of the body, Is there any plan that a particular kind of body with, as you say, long hair or fatty tissue should exist under certain natural conditions? Who made these arrangements? That is the question. Disciple No one. Modern evolutionists ultimately base their theory on the existence of chance variations. Srila Prabhupada, that is nonsense. There is no such thing as chance. If they say chance, then they are nonsense. Our question remains, who has created the different circumstances for the existence of different kinds of animals? Disciple, for example, a frog may lay thousands of eggs but out of all of them, only a few may survive to adulthood. Those who do are more fit than the others. If the environment did not favorably select the fittest, then too many frogs... Srila Yes, frogs and many other animals lay eggs by the hundreds. A snake gives birth to scores of snakes at a time, and if all were allowed to exist, there would be a great disturbance. Therefore, big snakes devour the small snakes. That is nature's law. But behind nature's law is a brain. That is our proposition. Nature's law is not blind, because behind it there is a brain, and that brain is God. We learn this from the Bhagavad Gita 
Ten. Maya Dyakshina Prakriti Suyate Sacharacharam. Whatever is taking place in material nature is being directed by the Supreme Lord who maintains everything in order. So the snake lays eggs by the score. And if many were not killed, the world would be overpopulated, overwhelmed by snakes. Hmm. Similarly, male tigers kill the cubs. The economic theory of Malthus states that whenever there is over overpopulation, there must be an outbreak of war, epidemic, famine or the like to curb it. These natural activities do not take place by chance, but are planned. Anyone who says they are a matter of chance has insufficient knowledge. Disciple. But Darwin has a huge amount of evidence. Shall proper evidence? That is all right. We also have got evidence. Evidence must be there. But as soon as there is evidence, there should be no talk of chance. Disciple. For example, out of millions of frogs, one may happen to be better adapted to living in the water. Srila Prabhupada. But that is not by chance, that is by law. He doesn't know that. As soon as one says chance, it means his knowledge is imperfect. A man says chance when he cannot explain. It is evasive. So the conclusion is that he is without perfect knowledge and therefore unfit for giving any knowledge. He is cheating, that's all. Disciple. Well, Darwin sees a plan or design in a sense, but... Shla Prabhupada. If he sees a plan or design, then whose design? As soon as you recognize a design, you must acknowledge a designer. If you see a plan, then you must accept a planner. That he does not know, disciple. But the plan is only the evil in uh, the plan is only the involuntary working of nature. Involuntary working of nature. Shla <laughs> Prabhupada, nonsense. There is a plan. The sun rises daily according to exact calculation. It does not follow our calculation. Rather, we calculate according to the sun. Experiencing that in such and such season, the sun rises at such and such time, we learn that according to the season, the sun rises exactly on the minute, the second. It is not by whimsy or chance, but by minute plan. Hmm. Disciple. But can't you say it's just mechanical? Srila Prabhupada Then who made it mechanical? If something is mechanical, then there must be a mechanic, a brain. Who made the machine? Here is something mechanical. Srila Prabhupada points to a telex machine. Who made it? This machine has not come out by itself. It is made of iron. And the iron did not mold itself into a machine. There is a brain who made the machine possible. So everything in nature has a plan or design. And behind that plan or design is a brain. A very big brain. 
disciple. Darwin tried to make the appearance and disappearance of living forms seem so natural that God is removed from the picture. Evolutionary theory makes it appear as if combinations of material ingredients created life and then various species evolved one from another naturally. Shila Prabhupada. That is foolishness. Combination means God. God is combining. Combination. Combination does not take place automatically. Suppose I am cooking. There are many ingredients gathered for cooking, but they do not combine together by themselves. I am the cooker. And in cooking, I combine together ghee, spices, rice, dal, and so on. And in this way, nice dishes are produced. Similarly, the combination of ingredients in nature requires God. Otherwise, how does the moment arise in which the combination takes place? Do you place all the ingredients in the kitchen and in an hour come back and say, Oh, where is my meal? Nonsense! Who will cook your meal? You'll starve! But take help of a living being and then we'll cook and we can eat. This is our experience. So if there is combination, then who is combining? The scientists are fools not to know how combination takes place. Disciple, scientists now say life arose out of four basic elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen. Srila Prabhupada, if the basic principle is chemicals, who made the chemicals? That question should be asked. Disciple, isn't it possible that one day science will discover the source of these chemicals? Srila Prabhupada, there is no question of discovering. The answer is already known, although it may not be known to you. We know. Vividanta says, Janmadhyasya Yataha. The original source of everything is Brahman, Krishna. Krishna says, Aham sarvasya prabhavu matah sarvam pravartate. Quote, I am the origin of everything. Bhagavad Gita 10.8 So we know that there is a big brain who is doing everything. We know. The scientists may not know, that is their foolishness. Disciple, they might say the same thing about us. Srila Prabhupada, no, they cannot say the same thing about us. We accept Krishna, not blindly. Our predecessors, the great Acharyas and the learned scholars, have accepted Krishna as the origin of everything. So we are not following blindly. We claim that Krishna is the origin, but what claim can the scientist make? As soon as he says chance, it means that he has no knowledge. Don't say chance. We have an original cause, but he says chance, therefore he has no knowledge. <laughs> Jai, we're going to stop here for today and continue tomorrow. Where the disciple will bring the excavation as the proof of Darwin's theory. So thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description. And we shall see you next time. Hare Krishna.